The headlight doors on this car were operated with these vacuum modules and that would open the doors for these headlights. Um, these can become a little bit unreliable and can have some other problems when you start dealing with vacuum issues and so as part of the rebuild of this car we decided that we wanted to go to an electrical headlight control system so we have purchased some electrical actuators that control the headlight doors um, I've installed the one on this side I am going to show you how we're going to install the one on this side um, for me it's easier if we lift the car up so I'm going to go ahead and lift this car up and then we're going to show you the process so the first thing that we're going to do is remove these springs we'll remove them from both the inner and the outer spring now this pin right here has a cotter pin that's running through it right here. Now that we've removed the four nuts from the bottom of this actuator, this actuator will just pull up and out of the way. These actuators are marked. There's a D on this one and it says pass on this one for passenger side. So we're gonna set this actuator up in place. You gotta get this little bracket here, this arm to line up so that it'll slip up in place. Now we're going to mark this slot in this actuator and then we'll go ahead and remove the actuator again. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to notch this fiberglass. Now the arm for that actuator has a place to travel. So we're gonna again set this back up in here. Again, we gotta make sure that our support brackets line up. And then we have a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut that goes on each of these four bolts. And we will install all four of them and then we'll come back and show you the connection for the actuator. This piece right here is designed to pivot on the old actuator. The new actuator has its own pivot, so we're going to remove this piece. And then we are going to reinstall the pin. Make sure that we get our little spacers in there the way that they're supposed to be. And then we will put our washer and our cutter pin back in. Before we put the springs back on this, we want to use this turnbuckle and make sure that the headlights open fully without any restrictions. And we're gonna do that on both sides and then we will install the springs back on it and then we'll come back and we'll do the wiring. 
So now that we've got these light actuators installed and we've tested them to make sure that they operate properly, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to hook the harness up for these. Now this harness comes so that it plugs into each light and then we will mount this relay, probably mount it right here to this brace. And now that we have these light actuators all put in place, we have run our wire to our relay so that they will operate. I actually had to repair one of the wires here on this. It looks like I may have to repair another one. Um, had to repair one of the wires here. We've run our ground right here to this part. This blue wire right here, this is our control wire. It controls the headlights and it's going to go up into the cab of the car and going to run off of the dimmer switch. This red wire comes back here and is going to go to power. Now on my wiring harness, this is all of the wiring that needs to go to the fuse block, which will set right in this area. And so I'm going to run this red wire up to here. I am going to tie it to this front cross member with zip ties going both directions and then I will mount it up underneath of this lip on this fender and I will go ahead and run a wire loom around these wires because that will help the wire to disappear in the engine compartment plus it protects the wire. Thanks for watching.